Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft, and this V-Card tutorial is for beginners who are trying to understand some of the toolpath functions in V-Carve. And specifically, this video is just going to talk to you about the differences between profile toolpath and pocketing toolpath. Now, I'm not going to dive deep into each one. I will do separate videos on those because I want to give you the entire dirt on each one. Because once you understand them, you will know more than most other CNCers out there. Profile and pocketing are very powerful tools, and they are tools you'll use all the time. So it, we are in VCarve, and you can see that I have drawn some objects here. Now the material I've set up is 24 inches by 24 inches by 3 quarters of an inch thick. I have two circles, two squares, and two lines. So in VCarve, when you switch over to toolpaths, I'm going to just come back to the drawing area and show you. This is this arrow button here will take you over to the toolpath area, and you'll see this type of menu here. The first two buttons are the ones you'll use almost all the time. You have profile toolpath and pocketing toolpath. So let's talk about profile toolpath first. And the way, before we do that, I want the way to think about these two, a very simple analogy is picture a simple cup. And a profile is actually going to cut around the rim of the cup. So if this circle down here was a cup, when you select profile, you're telling the machine to do its cut work based on a line, a circle, and to follow that line or circle <clears throat> or square, whatever it may be. So the tool will actually just come in some, at some point on the object and follow that line. Now there's lots of different settings that you can use, but just leave it to that idea that it always just follow the line. Whereas a pocketing toolpath will cut out a shape within the line. So in this case, we have a square selected. You told it to do a pocketing toolpath. It'll cut out the inside of the square. When it comes to the cup, then what it'll do is cut out the cup part and leave the rim. So pocketing will cut out the inside. So let's demonstrate this a little bit. We're going to go into profile toolpath. And I'm just going to set up a couple simple settings for you. The first one is the start depth. And I'm going to set that at zero, meaning that we're going to start at the top of the material, the surface of the material. And in here, the cut depth, I'm just going to type in Z equals. And that's going to tell the software that we're going to cut all the way through the material. And now we're going to set up our tool. So I am going to set up a quarter inch end mill. And the way you do that is just hit select. Right now it says it's a one eighth end mill. I want a quarter inch. So I'm going to go to select and I'm going to select my quarter inch end mill right here. Click that. Click OK. <clears throat> and we're set up. Now before I calculate, uh, first of all, I'm not going to do much more over here. You want to select your lines. So we're going to select all three of these. So let's come back. And so you have a few selections right here. So we're just going to select on for right now. And what that's going to do is tell the tool that we're going to get, come right down on the line and the center of the tool is going to follow the profile of the line. And it's going to cut all the way through the material. So I'm going to hit calculate. And you see I've got a bunch of blue lines now and a couple of red lines on here. And the blue lines are actually following the profile of the lines that we drew over here. When I hit run, I'll come into the uh, preview toolpaths menu when we say calculate. And we're, then we're going to preview the toolpaths. That's what I mean by run. We hit that. And now you see that the tool has followed the circle all the way through the material. It's followed the square all the way through the material and followed that little line all the way through the material. And if I double click this material here, it goes away and we're left with the two shapes. Now it didn't keep the line because that was part of the material that was not cut out. 
Um, if I hit preview and just do that again. Basically, when you double click on material out here, it'll eliminate anything that material is attached to. So this is run and nothing's attached to that inside circle or the inside square. And that's why that was left behind. So when I click it, that's what happens. So I'm going to reset that. So you now see that the profile actually follows a profile. It follows the circle, it follows the square, it follows the line. So I'm going to hit close. And now we're going to go into pocketing toolpath right here. And pocketing is actually going to create a pocket within those shapes. So I'm going to select the square and the circle. And I'm going to set up the same settings. Our start depth is zero. Our cut depth is 0.75. Our tool is 1 8 end mil. I want to change that to a quarter inch end mil. So I'm going to click remove. Get rid of that. And I'm going to click select. And we're going to grab the quarter inch end mil. And you can see there's a couple of buttons here called offset and raster. So you're going to stick with offset for right now. The difference, just so you know, offset. The tool will come in starting at the middle and it'll basically, let's get a little closer here. It'll come into the middle and it'll step out a little bit, cut a circle, then it'll step out a little bit more, cut a circle again, step out more until it gets all the way out to the outside of, the, of that line or the profile. Raster, on the other hand, will go back and forth. It'll start up here or down here and it'll go back, it'll go this way, come up, go that way, come up, go that way, come up, go that way, and keep doing that all the way through. Now, I'll show you the difference between those two briefly in a minute. What I just want to do is, so you can see the difference here. So I've got this square and a circle selected, and I click Calculate. And you see all these blue lines. Now, remember before, I had, let's just do this here, click that, and you see the blue lines are following the the profile, this one, the blue lines are all inside the profile. When I say run toolpath, the selected toolpath, now selected toolpath is whatever's turned blue up here. If I click profile 1, well profile 7, it'll run that one. If I run profile uh, 1, pocket 1, it'll run that one. And that's what I'm selected. So I'm going to run it. And you can see it cut out inside the square. So that's the difference between these two. So pocketing toolpath will cut out the inside of the lines, whereas the profile toolpath will cut relative to the line itself. Um, I'm going to go back into this pocketing toolpath because I want to show you one more thing here. Now you notice I didn't select that line before. Now I'm going to select the line this time and leave the other two selected. And I'm going to expect to get an alarm. When I click Calculate, it says Ignoring Unsuitable Open Vectors. So what it's telling me, it says one open vectors were identified, and this section will be ignored. There are two remaining vectors. So what that means is the box here is a closed area that there's no way to get out of it. Same with the circle. However, this line has an open area, so it's considered an open vector. So when it tries to do a pocketing toolpath on an open line, you'll get an alarm like this. Uh, you'll also see that if you don't have a complete closed vector. That's uh, watch my videos on nodes, and I'll try to put a link down below that'll explain what I just talked about. So we click OK, and it redoes this. Now. I want you to take a look at something. Let's go back into it. We're on raster now. You remember before I was on offset. So I want to play this again. I want you to see the difference. Let's do it this way. I'm gonna we're gonna leave that to raster now. Nah. We're gonna do the offset. We're gonna calculate. I'm gonna say okay, it gave me that alarm because I still have that line selected. I'm gonna reset this image. Then I'm gonna run it again. And you see these are nice, clean cuts. The circle's nice and clean. The square's nice and clean. I'm going to go over to the other one. 
and I'm going to create another pocketing tool path. So we're going to do it again. The settings that we had in the last one are going to be carried into this one, such as a cut depth and the tool. So I'm going to leave all that, but I'm going to change it to raster. And I'm going to select the circle and the square over here. And then remember, offset goes around in circles, uh, or it'll go in little squares, bigger squares, bigger squares, and keep going around. Raster goes back and forth. And here's the difference. So we're going to run this tool path. And if you look, you can see it's much more jagged around the circle as it is over here. And the reason is because it goes back and forth, it just moves up, it goes back and forth more. And so you might wonder when would you use that over the raster over the offset. I use rasters almost all the time when I'm doing big projects. Uh, and the reason, the time I like to use them, if, if I'm doing a big sign and I'm going to be pocketing out a lot of material, let's just say I'm going to have raised letters and uh, a boundary, and I want to pocket out material, I want to use the raster to follow along the grain. So it'll go back and forth along the grain. If I use offset, what it'll do, it'll take all kinds of funny turns as it's trying to work its way out. And that leaves a lot of weird marks on the grain of your material. So when you do a raster cut and you, just, and you program it to cut along the grain, you get a much cleaner finish. So I'm going to delete this one for just a moment. Delete this. And we are going to reset and we're going to run all the tool I'm going to run all the tool paths so just we cover this again real quick and I'm going to close that this is profile and that's this type of cut right here this is pocket and it does this kind of cut right here profile will follow a line and it will follow any line whether it's an open or closed vector any line that you select. Pocketing will only cut within boundaries that are closed. So if you have any open vectors, such as that line right there, and you tell it, try to tell it to do a pocket, it won't do it because it doesn't know what to do with it. Okay, so I hope this video helped you understand the difference between pocketing and profiling. This one is profile cutting. This one is pocket cutting. This is Garrett. If this video helped you out, give me a thumbs up and a comment. And uh, tell me what else you want to know. I will shoot videos on that as well. Hope you have a great day. And uh, subscribe if you'd like.